going to talk a little bit about CI, CD, or software workflows in general for Go projects. And this is a, this is a fairly simple and usual Go project. I'd say it's called OpenMeter. It's an open source project I'm working on right now. Uh, it, it has a bunch of different binaries in it. Some are packaged as container images. Um, also has a few Helm charts that we need to publish. Some are published as binary artifacts that you can download from GitHub. So we have a bunch of different uh, distribution uh, strategies here. And obviously we have a bunch of tests we need to run in a CI pipeline. We have linterns we have to run. So we have all, all the basic stuff that you would expect from a Go application. And I'm going to go through the pipelines, or I, I kind of like to call them software workflows, not CI pipelines, because it's not really just CI from a few different aspects. And the first one I want to take, the first aspect I want to take a look at is the workflows themselves and then how we actually call them. So as you would expect, we have uh, CI workflow, uh, one you would have in GitHub Actions, for example, and we run all the different steps that you would run in GitHub Actions or in any other CI. Uh, we use Go, the project is written in Go, so we use the Go SDK to, uh, to implement these steps. I implemented a bunch of base modules um, that I have in my Tagger Wells repo for building Go applications for packaging Helm charts, and we basically use those uh, as reusable components in these um, pipelines or workflows. And the CI workflow, as you can see, is fairly simple. It just calls in a number of jobs that we have. Uh, I'll talk a little bit later about why these are separated like this. But the idea is that the code, since this is just plain code, it can be organized and extracted into function, functions however you like. And in this case, if you were like, one of the basic principles during designing this code was if you are a, uh, a beginner or you are trying to get acquainted with this code, you should easily find the entry points and go to the specific steps that you need to find. So in this case, we have a bunch of tests. You can easily go to the test functions and you will find a Go test run. Uh, we have a bunch of linters. And uh, this, is, this is one of the patterns we came up with for implementing kind of a default function. Um, we'll show you how that works. But we have a bunch of linters for Go. We have a linter for an open API description. Uh, and though since we have more than one linter. We've grouped this under a so-called submodule. I call them submodules uh, and separate functions. Um, and then we have a bunch of uh, build artifacts, container images, hum charts. We don't actually publish them here. These are just the build steps, uh, but we do build them to see if there is anything wrong uh, with the build itself. And we have a so-called release of sets, which is basically just a, a bunch of binaries that we want to publish to GitHub uh, and uh, check some file, uh, stuff like that. So that's that's our generic CI workflow. And I will actually go ahead and show you how we run that within GitHub Actions. Uh, so we do use GitHub Actions and running that workflow is actually as simple as running a single Dagger action, you don't even need check out for this uh, because the dagger action can download the dagger binary and call the remote module. Uh, I will show you that in a bit. The other workflow that we have is fairly similar is the release workflow. This is this one is also called from GitHub Actions. Uh, we push a couple ham charts here. Container image publishing is not implemented here yet uh, for reasons. But we do publish some binary artifacts here to GitHub. And we basically create the GitHub release here. And it's structured similarly. Like if you need to change something in the release code, you can easily find this function 
and go into the specific functions and figure out what you need to change. For example, if you need to publish Helm charts to a different repository or something like that. So these are the, uh, and you can also find this in the GitHub action call here. So these are the steps that you would run in a regular CI setting. But one of the challenges in, in a development environment is you, you often have to have like two sets of tools for your CI and your local environment. And Dagger actually solves that problem by being able to run all of these pipelines locally. Now, you probably don't want to run all of those release pipelines from your local machine. You, want, you, you, you still want the CI to do that for you. And maybe you don't want to run the entire CI pipeline locally every time because you just changed some code in the test. You just want to run the test. And that's the reason why these different CI steps, uh, one of the reason uh, they are actually extracted into these smaller functions because you can actually call these separately. So the other principle when designing our CI pipeline or, or workflows with Dagger was that they should have like an interface that you can also call from locally. Uh, and you should also be able to like call individual steps that make sense during the software lifecycle. For example, if you want to just run the tests, you can easily do that by running Dagger call test. And it's going to run all of the tests for you. Now, the lint part is a little bit more tricky because if you just run Dagger call lint, it's not going to run all of your lint steps. Because as I showed you before, we have we actually have multiple different lint linters. And maybe you just want to run one of the linters, but maybe you want to run all of the linters. So how do you do that? And that's why we came up with this oval pattern where we basically just package all of the functions within that submodule into a single run. So if you wanted to run them all, you can just run, run the dagger, call it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, it requires a supplement. So you can just run dagger, call lint all. Uh, and uh, I'd really, this, this is a feature request from me. I'd really like dagger if I was able to just register like a default handler so that running dagger call it would also work. That would be cool. But right now we just usually have this all uh, extra command and um, and that just runs all of the other functions. But you can also just run dagger call in Go and it would just run the goal in there if you change something in a Go code and wanted to see if that fixed uh, the Go build. Um, let's see. We have a similar setup for the build part. So if you wanted to, for example, just build the one of the binaries, you can easily do that. This is a little bit more complicated. Like we have submodules and submodules of submodules here. But the idea was that you should be able to like organize your workflows into a hierarchy and build the smallest unit of artifact or resource that you have. So in this case, with a binary, you would run dagger call build binary and then the binary name, Pentos Collector, for example. And obviously we have the all functions for all those levels as well. Now the nice thing about this is we can actually reuse some of the code. So with the binary part, for example, we have a publicly exposed function that you can call with dagger call. But there is an internal version as well that allows you to specify the version, for example, when you when you build a local binary version, a, a dev version, you generally don't want to change the version. You should you, you want it to be something like an empty string or dev or something. So it's not exposed. And we have an internal version that we call from the release and the CI workflows where we actually change those versions. All right, uh, what else? Oh yeah, one very important change that I recently made uh, is that I don't actually use the checkout step. I, I think I already mentioned that, but the, here comes the explanation. I don't actually use the checkout step in GitHub Actions anymore. I use Dagger's 
remote build feature uh, for modules. So this module can be actually can actually be called remotely, and uh, and when it when it's called remotely, you need to pass along like a source to the base module. When you run it locally, it's going to default to the host directory. So it grabs everything from the host. By the way, I know this is not the latest uh, Dagger version yet. Uh, it still uses Dag host stuff. So this is not the latest version yet. Uh, I haven't been able to upgrade yet to the latest version due to some uh, directory exclusion issues. Um, DRAM went flakes and a bunch of other stuff just spams the host directory with large directories and files. So uh, it actually kind of kills the whole uh, copying into build kit. But um, yeah, so basically when you run this locally, it's going to use the host directory as a source. And when you run the module locally, you need to pass a uh, commit hash, for example, and Dagger is going to clone that repository. This is an open source repository, so it's this is easy to implement. I'm not sure how it would work with a private repository. Um, you can probably make it work, but uh, this is an open source one, so it's it's easy to make it work like this. And basically, every module and submodule receives this source parameter, which is just the host directory or or the root directory of the project, and that's. That's the that's the content of the project that every single build step operates on. Uh, let's see, anything I'm missing? End-to-end -end tests. Yeah, we have a bunch of end-to-end -end tests uh, that use these services, and these reuse the same build steps. Like these, these reuse the same container builds. Uh, as you can see here, oops. So there is a lot of reuse between the different types of usage for, for example, container builds. We use the same container build step in end-to-end -end tests. We use the same container build step for publishing container images, and we use them for running them locally as well. I think... That's mostly it. I don't it's know if there's any questions. Yeah, there, there is there is one question um, actually from from me on the channel. Ah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I didn't ping your name. I didn't want to to disrupt the flow. Uh, yeah, question I have. It looks like a lot of this uh, this pipeline is can can be reusable for other Go applications. In particular, I'm thinking about Dagger, like um, itself, the project world using a lot of Go uh obviously mm -hmm. and so so a lot of of this lo looks familiar I, is it um in the way you structured your modules like how many modules are reusable and and if some of them are reusable did you publish some already so people yeah can so yeah uh well as i said some of the base modules are available uh let me bring in a rosair tab So I have a repo on GitHub called Daggerverse. This is basically how everyone does it these days. And I have, let me try to zoom in. How do I zoom in? Oh, we, we can post uh, the link to, you can post yeah. the link to Discord so, also. I guess so the base open. modules for building Go applications, Golang CI Lint, building ham charts, publishing on GitHub, what else? Open our API linter. These are all available as modules there. And then this is basically just the glue. So if I go into, let's say, ham chart build, this is this is basically just the glue for building the the ham chart itself. So as you as you can see, there there are actually two steps here. One generating a readme file from a template, adding it to the chart, and then building a Helm package. But this is this is probably the most important part for building the Helm chart package itself. Like you need a source directory and then just a simple call to the Helm module itself. 
Similarly with Go, this is the Go test call. And you basically just use the Go module, pass in the source and run a bunch of parameters. Or with the linter, this is this is how you, you run the lint. So most of the the CI module here is actually just glue using these these base modules, which is nice because most of it is reusable and then you can tailor it to your taste in your own uh, application workflows. Nice, great. Well, if you if you want to share some of those uh, generic modules, like I'm thinking about the help one, uh, you can also share the, the Daggerverse um, uh, URL directly so people can just copy paste the uh, the install command. I I would definitely try some of them. <laughs> it's great. Sure. Th thanks a lot. <laughs>